What's up, guys? Jaxel here. Um, putting a short video together explaining uh, the new scoreboard system 1.19 I will be releasing. Uh, I'm going to be releasing it alongside a new version of my scoreboard primer. Um, and the reason for that is this new version of the scoreboard system doesn't actually add any new obvious features to the program. What it adds is some new code behind that makes it better for your on-screen scripting and animations to your title updates. And uh, before we get into the new changes, let's quickly go over the old version. Um, I have a folder here, scoreboard.xml. It's got scoreboard assistant 1.19 already in it. Uh, let's open that up. And if you're familiar with the program, you should already know how it works. You go to a panel, uh, you click save, and it saves the information to various uh, XML files. Of course, you can have it uh, save also the text files and image files as well with some simple configuring. But by default, it's only XML files. And what I do with my scoreboard primer program, as well as some older versions I've released, uh, is I read that XML file using a whole bunch of JavaScript, um, get the information from those XML fields, and then populate an XML file. So let's take a look at that with this caster screen. And you'll see that it reads the data, displays it on the screen, all nice like with the animations. And of course, I can send updates to it. And after up to five seconds it will update the screen there you go now the way this works is you can see here it uh, pulls the XML file once every five seconds 44 49 54 59 49 etc and it's going to keep on doing this till you close the web page or remove it from your uh, your stream layout and just every five seconds, it's going to pull, looking for updates to this file. If it doesn't find any, it doesn't do anything. If it does find something, it'll do an animation and uh, update your screen. Now, there are downsides of doing it this way. Firstly, like I said, it has to pull every five seconds. And even if you're not updating anything, it still has to pull. It still has to consume those resources. And the web renderers in both XSplit and OBS are not that efficient so you're consuming a lot of computer resources depending as well depending on how complicated your layouts are you could have four or five web pages on a single screen you know all with all your polls and it can be a significant problem um, now what I'm doing with this new version is I'm getting rid of this periodic polling you're not gonna have to do it anymore uh, the code's going to change a bit. Like, you can still use the XMLs if you want. I'm leaving the XMLs on by default. I know a lot of people use them. If you use XSplit, XSplit actually has a built-in XML reader for their title cards. So you can continue, continue to keep on using that. But if you write your own scripts, you're probably going to switch over to the WebSocket system, which, will be, which is in its new version, because it's a lot better, and I'll show you why. Okay. So let's uh, go over to my other folder of scripts. Now, this is the same exact program, Scoreboard Assistant 1.19. The only difference is the web pages uh, and the scripts behind it. Like this is uh, casters.js with the new version and casters.js with the old version. You can see there are differences. Not a lot of differences, but they're there. And so let's open up. Uh, scoreboard assistant and then let's open up casters.html this is the websocket version and right along the bat you see it says fail to connect to websocket and this is going to be the address for all websocket calls on scoreboard assistant and this is simple because we haven't started the websocket server uh, so if we go to scoreboard assistant and click on the down arrow go to config options you can see two new options at the top. First is enable the XML file outputs, which I said before will be the default. And the second is enable the WebSocket server. Um, first of all, I'm going to disable the XML file outputs. If I'm using the WebSocket servers, I don't need the XML file outputs. If you want, you can continue to use both. 
So now that's disabled, I'm going to enable WebSocket server. I click that, and of course we have a Windows security alert asking for a firewall allowance for this program, and we're going to click allow access. Now, because you're actually doing uh, this WebSockets, this means theoretically that you can have uh, a different computer on your network updating the uh, the title cards to your stream because you, you, this goes across your home network. So I'm just going to click Allow Access here. Now, you can theoretically do that. I'm not going to uh, go into how to do it because it's such a uh, specific use case. All right, so now that the WebSocket server is enabled, I'm going to refresh this casters page. And let's uh, open up the uh, console. And what we have here is, uh, I don't know if you guys know how WebSockets work. WebSockets, I'm, this web page is not polling anything. Instead, it's connected directly to the WebSocket on your network, on your home computer, or wherever you're streaming from. And it's just listening. That's all the web page is doing. It's just listening for the program to send uh, a bullet out to the WebSocket. And so you can see here, there's no periodic polling for once every five seconds. It's just sitting there waiting. And so I'm going to click Save. And instantly it receives the data. You don't have to wait up to five seconds for the update. It's just going to update immediately as soon as it receives the data. And of course, I can... Uh, Mash the save button, and you can see it's going to keep on sending the data out. But, you know, you're not normally going to do that. And the advantage of this, of course, is besides the fact that the moment I change anything, it's instantly going to get updated without the wait, there's also no resources being consumed every five seconds while it pulls an XML file on your computer somewhere. This is a much better system, and I just discovered WebSockets through my work with uh, working with the Discord API, and man, I love WebSockets. <laughs> they're fantastic. They're, they're genius, whoever came up with them. And that's pretty much the changes for this new version. That's it, WebSockets. Now, you may be wondering, how do I read the WebSockets? Um, I actually have this page here called test.html. And it's uh, just an example page. And what happens is the WebSocket is actually sending out a JSON uh, string. Now, it's not, when you're working with uh, network type stuff, generally it's either XML or JSON. We're using JSON for the WebSockets, XML with the XML file because it's easier for the human eye to read. And this uh, test.html page, all it's going to do is echo out the JSON request. So let's open that up. And I can go to any page, click Save, and you can see this is my event tab, this is the time, and this is the JSON bullet it received. And I can go to any page, and it's just going to show the JSON bullets it's receiving from the program. And I don't know if uh, you guys are going to appreciate this, but this is a lot better, and uh, I hope that you guys will learn about the glory of WebSockets. Anyways, peace out, guys, and have a good night.